Hey everybody, Mr. Kowalczyk here. Today we're going to talk about Geometry Unit 10, Lesson 4, 30, 60, 90 right triangles. So in this case, we're going to find the side lengths of a triangle using the properties of a 30, 60, 90. So today we've got two more rules, whereas previously with the 45, 45, 90, we just had one. So our first question is going to help us see some of these patterns is, what can we do with an equilateral triangle with side length of two? So if we know the side lengths are two, and it's an equilateral triangle, we know that all of the sides are the same and all of the angles are the same. Okay, cool. So that's, that's helpful. Um, but what else could we do? Well, we can also see about splitting this angle in half to 30 degrees by drawing a vertical line straight down the triangle. And that's gonna create a 90 degree angle right there and two 30 degree angles here. And what we see here is what we uh, talked about for the title of the lesson, the 30, 60, 90 triangle. So we have a 30 degree angle, a 60 degree angle, and a 90 degree angle. And we've got the same thing over here. And what that vertical um, <clears throat> bisector does is it splits this in half. So this is equal to one, and this is also equal to one. They're both congruent to each other with these tick marks here. All right, cool. So, well, what else can we do if we look at this particular 30, 60, 90, can we figure out the length of this? And yes, we can, because if we just look at this particular triangle right here, what we could do is we could use the Pythagorean theorem. Stay in focus. There we go. All right, so if we use the Pythagorean theorem on that one, we know that this side is our hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle. And then therefore we have C squared equals A squared plus B squared where we know that one of our side lengths is gonna be one and the other is gonna be two. So let's check it out here. Two squared equals one squared plus B squared, where our height here is gonna be B squared. So this is gonna give us four equals one plus B squared. So I'm gonna subtract one from both sides and get three is equal to B squared. And then I square root both sides. And then B is gonna equal the square root of three. Now what this does is it shows us the first relationship between our legs of our 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So let's go ahead and talk about what those are gonna look like here. Now, <clears throat> the first thing we need to do before we talk about those relationships is we need to label our diagram. So this is gonna be important to make sure that you label this correctly. I'm gonna do it in pen. Maybe you do it in pencil in case you make any mistakes. So here we've got our 30 degree angle, which is gonna look smaller than the 60 degree angle. And we also have our 90 degree angle. Now, the easy one to label is gonna be this side opposite the right angle. That's gonna be the hypotenuse. Now these next two sides are, you wanna be really careful about, okay? Because um, you're gonna to need to pay attention to where they are in all of your 30, 60, 90 triangles. Now, if I go from my 60, the side opposite my 60, I, I start here and I kind of, it opens up and I go opposite. This side right here is going to be called the long leg, right? We're gonna to refer to that as the long leg or just the long. And as you might imagine, the side opposite the 30, that's gonna be called the short or the short leg. Okay, so making sure that you get those correct. Now the next one, so we've got an, our, our equations here and what we saw up above was the relationship between the short leg here, the hypotenuse here and the longer leg here, which we said was equal to the square root of three. So let's check it out here. These are rules, the equations are rules that we're gonna come up with. So the long leg is equal to the short leg times the square root of three. And then we'll reverse that one. The short leg is equal to the long leg divided by the square root three. So those are relationships between the long and the short. Then we also have relationships between the short and the hypotenuse. Because if you look up here, this is one, the short is one, and the long is two which tells us that if the short leg, sorry, not the long, the hypotenuse, if the short leg is one and the 
uh, hypotenuse is two, that means that the hypotenuse is double the short leg. So that's our second rule here. So the hypotenuse is equal to the short times two. And then again, reversing that, the short is equal to the hypotenuse divided by two. So those are, it's basically two rules. I just wrote them in different ways. And those are all the rules that we're gonna need for today. Everything else that we're gonna do is gonna come off of those two rules. This is the big, big learning for today, okay? Now let's take a look at an example here. Now I'm gonna jump back into my pencil, make sure I get it right. So here we have X and Y, and we're trying to solve for them in our particular triangle. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna label the sides of my triangle because that way I wanna make sure that I get things right. So my angle here, let me put this in black, is gonna be 30 degrees. And then opposite my 30 is going to be my short. And I'm going to label these sides so I know what's what. Opposite the 90 is my hypotenuse. And opposite my 60 is my long. All right, so now I've got the, this labeled. Now I can kind of start to figure out what's what. So if I start with my hypotenuse, the easy way to do it is to, is to go ahead and solve for the short because that's just dividing by two. I don't have to worry about any square roots in there. So the short is gonna be over here, y. So I'm gonna write my rule down, short equals hypotenuse divided by two. So I'm now I'm gonna replace what I know and solve for what I don't. My short is called y, and that equals the hypotenuse, which is 16 divided by two, therefore y equals eight. Awesome. Okay, now I have to solve for x, which is my long side. So then my long side, my rule is short times root three, Okay, so now I substitute in my long side is called X and that equals the short side, which is Y, which is eight times root three or X is eight root three. Let me fix that there. And that's that, we're done. So we use the rules that we have over here in order to solve for what we don't know in our 30, 60, 90 right triangles. Okay, let's try a couple sample problems here. All right, so number six, what happened to one, two, and three? I don't know. Looks like one, two, and three are missing, unfortunately. Okay, well, I guess we'll jump in with six. All right, four and five seem to be missing. Maybe a page got, didn't get copied correctly. All right, so let's jump into six. Solve for the variable in each figure if it gets focused. All right, there we go. So now in this case, we have X and Y. So I'm gonna label this as 30. This is my short, which is opposite the 30. The five root three is my long. I'm gonna put it up here so I can save some space. And then X is my hypotenuse, okay? So now I have to figure out what my rules are in order to go from long to short and short to hypotenuse. I don't have any rules, unfortunately, to go directly from long to hypotenuse, so I can't solve for that one. So um, looking in the video, it looks a little hard to follow, so I'm gonna move to a pen here. I have to go from long to short. So that tells me my rule, if I flip back on the previous page, it says short equals long divided by root three. So the short is equal to y, and that's equal to five root three divided by root three. Well, in this situation, the root threes cancel out and y is gonna be equal to five. They reduce to one, they don't go away, but five times one is just five. All right, so now we know that the short equals five. And then we, it's easy to go from there to our hypotenuse because the hypotenuse is equal to the short times two. So then x is equal to five times two, x is equal to 10. Fantastic. Okay, let's try number seven here. With number seven, we know what the hypotenuse is. This is across from our 30, so this is gonna be our short. And this is across from our 60, so this is gonna be our long. I can't emphasize 
um, enough how wise I think it is to label these to make sure that you know which side is which. Um, I made so many mistakes over the years. I just learned that labeling them really helps me get things straight. All right, now I can go from hypotenuse to short pretty easily and I have my hypotenuse. So short is equal to hypotenuse divided by two. And I plug in what I know, X is equal to 10 divided by two. So X is equal to five, fantastic. And then, all right, now we go to our long, which is Y. So the long is equal to uh, short times root three. And then that's gonna give us uh, Y is equal to five times root three or just five root three. And we're done. Okay, I'm gonna leave you for eight and nine with uh, number 10, the piece of advice that I'm gonna give you is that this triangle looks just like the warm up. So look at the warm up and see if you can read this carefully and then plug in your values, maybe redraw it over here as a 30, 60, 90 in order to figure out the answer to the question, okay? So that's that. And then I wanna do one more together. Uh, down here, I wanna do number 16 together because that is a multi-step problem. And um, I wanna show you how to do one of those similar to the 45, 45, 90s that we did yesterday. So we got two different 30, 60, 90s here. This is 30 and this is 30 here, okay? Now I have to get from, from seven root two all the way over to X. So I have to solve for this leg here. Now in, in my first triangle, this is my hypotenuse. And then I have to go up to the 60. This is gonna be my long leg here in my first triangle in triangle one. Okay, so I have to go from the hypotenuse to the long, which means I also have to find the short. So I'm gonna put Y in here for the short and then say, remind myself, excuse me, the rule to go from hypotenuse to short, which is uh, short equals hypotenuse divided by two. So therefore Y is equal to seven root two divided by two. Now seven and two don't go into each other, so I can't reduce that very much uh, unless without getting a decimal, or like 3.5 root two. And we don't wanna have decimals when we have radical signs, that's not great. So we're gonna leave it like this for now. And then we're gonna try to move over to our long. So the long leg is equal, and that's this leg right here of our first triangle, okay? So um, the long leg is equal to the short, times root three. So then the long leg is equal to seven root two over two times root three. Remember this root three is over one, okay? So then that tells us that the long leg is equal to seven root six divided by two. Now root three times root two is root six and the seven and two don't change at all because they're outside the parentheses and I can't modify those. Okay, now if we look at triangle two, the long leg for triangle one turns into the hypotenuse for the triangle two. And then I'm trying to get again to the long leg, which is X. So I have to do the same process where I go from the hypotenuse to the short and then to the long. So I'm gonna draw a line here. This is triangle two. And then we know that the short is equal to the hypotenuse divided by two. So that tells me that the short, and that's this side over here, we'll call it side Z, is equal to our hypotenuse, which is this one, seven root six over two, and that's divided by two, okay? Now divide, if we divide something by two, we remember that that's multiplying by the reciprocal, which is one half. Some of you might've learned that as copy.flip or however you learned it, we are gonna multiply that way as well. So this is gonna be equal to, the short is gonna be equal to seven root six over four. And again, we can't reduce this, two times two is four, that's where that comes from. So we can't reduce that in order to, to um, get that any simpler. But now we can go to the hypotenuse, so then we know that the hypotenuse, I'm sorry, to the long, 
the long is right here for x. So long equals short times root three. All right, so let's see what happens now. So the long is gonna be x and that's gonna equal seven root six over four times root three. X is going to equal seven root 18 divided by four. Hmm, okay, that's interesting. Well, I know that root 18 has a perfect square factor. I can simplify that. So X is equal to seven root nine root two divided by four. Root nine just becomes three. Uh, so that's X, seven times three, which is 21 root two over four. And that's our final answer. 21 and four are both outside. We can't reduce them, so we're all set. Let me double check, make sure I did that correctly. Yes, I believe I did. All right, y'all, I'm gonna stop the lesson for there. This was a pretty complicated problem, but you've been working on this for quite a while and you know several days in this unit. So have a go, uh, be careful as you move forward. We'll do these practice problems in class. All right, see you later.